Hey everybody, and I mean everybody. Today we are talking about the almighty himbo. But first, <laughs> this video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers over 9,000 different prescription glasses and sunglasses at up to 70% off of retail prices. This includes in-house brands like the ones I'm gonna be showing you today and designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, and Gucci. So you can shop for all your eyewear needs online from the comfort of your home and at affordable prices, starting at literally $30 for a prescription pair of lenses. So the first pair I got, I'm wearing right now. These are the Atado Frederick glasses. Glasses, and these are actually blue light blocking glasses. GlassesUSA.com offers a huge variety of blue light blocking glasses, which are great to use during screen time to reduce headaches, eye strain, and also improve your sleep. I love the frameless design of these ones. That's definitely my preference when it comes to blue light glasses, and they have so many options to choose from. And if you're overwhelmed by just how many options there are, they have a quiz on the website. It only takes about a minute, and it suggests a pair of glasses based on your face shape and needs. And they have a virtual try-on feature so you can upload a picture of yourself and get an idea of what the glasses would look like on you. The next pair of glasses I have are prescription lenses. These are the Yoji Basano glasses and these are actually for my sibling Zoe. She is stealing my frameless style but to be fair we're both stealing it from Kyoyev. If you know you know. These are really great. I'm honestly a little jealous. GlassesUSA.com also offers a completely risk-free shopping experience, which means free shipping and returns and 100% money back guarantee and a 365 day product warranty so you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. The last pair of glasses I have to show you are the Altado Rocco glasses. Can we take a moment? <laughs> I love these. I've been wearing them pretty much every day. They are my new look. I usually style them with these big hoop earrings. I, I'll, I'll insert some some little reels I've been doing. I've been doing fashion reels. I'll insert some of those here so you can see what they look like in various outfits. But I love these. I love the smaller lens. I think it looks really great. Definitely my new obsession. Thank you GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and be sure to check them out with the link in my description. As always with these longer form videos, there will be some graphic references on the screen, but also feel free to treat this as a podcast if you want to listen while you're cleaning your room or winding down for the day or doing something else like coloring. And I'm just going to be here talking. So let's start out as any good commentary YouTube video does with the Merriam-Webster definition of a himbo. A himbo is an attractive but vacuous man. The word is pretty obviously derived by combining the him personal pronoun with bimbo, which has also been making a resurgence as of late. I also wanna make a note that I drafted this video in December of 2020, so <laughs> if you're like, why are you so late talking about this? <laughs> That's why it took me a year. I know that since drafting this video, Jordan Teresa has released a video called The Rise of Bimboification, I wanna say. Yeah, that's right. But I haven't referenced or seen that. And I wanna say that I came up with himboification long ago. I'm not stealing it, but we've been ificating all of everything, so. What I can tell you is that there tends to be a much more negative connotation around the word bimbo. One can tell that because people have had to reclaim the word bimbo for themselves. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it up to the fact that if a woman is deemed attractive, it is often assumed that she is just like not smart or doesn't have anything else going for her, especially when adopting like the bimbo aesthetic, which is just like blonde hair, Barbie chic. The bimbo bias, should we say? basically treating women who are hot in a bimbo way with a lack of respect. This is the kind of bias that our girly Elle Woods in Legally Blonde was up against, um, which is a great movie. It's kind of ahead of its time in like basically treating this character who is super feminine and kind of goofy in that way with respect and acknowledging that she has emotional depth and that she wants to pursue her career. And actually her extreme technical knowledge about perms makes her a better lawyer than anybody else in the room. So if you for some reason have gotten this far in your life without watching Legally Blonde, schedule it, put it on your calendar. And finally we have the himbo, which has been applied to basically the bimbo's male counterpart. Himbos you may be familiar with include, but are not limited to Hercules, Paul Metzler from The Election, Jason Mendoza from The Good Place, He's a really good one. Thor, who does have kind of an ego issue. Han Solo, especially has these depicted in Solo. Steve Harrington of Stranger Things, especially in the third season, because he's just like, what is he doing? And Kronk 
from a person who grew up. Something that I found out while researching this video that I think is really interesting is that the word bimbo, while it is applied to women today, it actually has Italian roots and was initially used to describe men in a disparaging way. So it's definitely interesting that a word that was initially used to describe men that was then applied to women has to be remasculinized in order for it to apply to men today. And that's on how language use is based on current social understanding. And also kind of gives a little hint into like why intergenerational conversations can be so confusing. Kimbo, as we know it today, was first coined in 1988 in an article by Rita Kempley for the Washington Post titled, <laughs> should I scream it because it's in all caps? I don't know. The himbo, all powerful and all beef. It's the real men. As you can see from this title, we are already talking about a character type as it exists within the realm of film because real film, real duh. And honestly, this article is a super fun read. It is fantastic. It is hilarious. <laughs> and as always, I will have my sources and my references linked in the description so you can you know, you know, see what I referenced. I'm not taking- I don't just know this stuff. <laughs> so Kempley goes on in this article to describe two different types of himbos. Believe me, we are working towards the modern himbo. We just need- we need a, we need the history of the himbo first and then we'll get to modern day. I swear. So if this feels a little unfamiliar, that's what's going on. So there's type A, himbo erectus, and type B, himbo sapiens. This is how she defines the type A himbo. You'll never find these guys in real relationships with women. They're infantile Neanderthals, hunks with the sexual awareness of 11 year olds who worship the Incredible Hulk. Flex, not sex, is the issue. The thought of kissing a girl is yucky. Basically, sex is not of concern to these guys. It's just all about the games. She describes the himbo sapien, type B as the evolution of the type A himbo. These guys are chauvinists who aim to please women or more so perhaps to earn women. <laughs> Arrogance and sexual expectation come with the looks. And a refusal is to be met with misogyny, i.e. you're not even that hot or you're slut anyway. Which when paired with that sexual expectation, the lack of respect clearly comes from the man's desires for that woman. Quote, the woman's movement put her in her power suit and shoulder pads. The men fought feminism with himboism and headed to the gyms to bulk up their sternocleidomastoids. This coincided not only with the fitness craze, but with the rise of the wimp. I cannot believe I said sternocleidomastoids on the first try? Did I? Did I say it right? Editing artist, you have to tell so, me. So they're showing us what real men are like. These guys couldn't possibly be refused because they just have so much manhood. This honestly reminds me a lot of the man who is unwilling to learn how to do basic domestic tasks because he's comfortable with letting the woman in his life do them for him. Yes, doing laundry and cooking are both skills, but when it is assumed that no man could learn those skills, those tasks are de facto left up to women to perform. And perhaps type B himbos feel that they've earned the right to say, go make me a sandwich. I also do want to say that I would never criticize a woman for wanting to fulfill those kinds of roles, but I would criticize a man for actively or passively avoiding learning the basic tenets of caring for oneself and one's home. Those are just really important life skills. I'm sorry, I've been digressing for like a second now, that's, this is how every single one of my videos go, I swear For to God. the most part, when I talk about himbos, and I think when most of us are talking about himbos today, we're talking about the slightly more endearing type A himbo, rather than the kind of man who would forget his wallet and then make you pay when he invited you out. So here's an article from the New York Times six years later in 1994 talking about the term. Quote, what exactly is a himbo? Depends on whom you talk to. Himbos are straight, good-looking men who read Hamptons Magazine and chase models around Soho on their Harleys, said Candace Bushnell, a contributing editor to Vogue. But in his voice gossip column, Michael Musto described the Atlanta nightclub Backstreet as a sprawling gay disco teeming with himbos. So up until this point, I've only discussed the himbo as the man who aims to please women or within that heterosexual role. But here we have a version of the himbo that is often overlooked. The almighty gay himbo. <laughs> Hot, muscly, and dumb. And so gay. And that's really all I have to say about that. Also, if it wasn't clear, I'm like so queer. So let's move into the newer definitions of the word himbo. Because as language and social understanding and behavior has changed, these older definitions don't really feel like they apply as readily. And I feel like we need to kind of translate them into the modern day. This is an opinion article by Nathan Ma for ID, which is run by Vice. And this is from 2020. I, I'm quoting so much. It's because these people say it better than I would. 
and I'm going to add my bits, but I'm compiling all of this for you, okay? I'm acknowledging it. Quote, there's a man who all my friends agree is the one that we want to come home to. He's not known for his brains nor his aptitude in any academic discipline. We praise his body nebulously, agreeing that we dream of his shoulders, though never quite specifying what it is about them that we hope to lay claim to as our own. We just like shoulders. Hard agree. Let me just say, girl, hard agree. <laughs> Some offer adjectives, fit, toned, pretty, strong, but we agree that the shared apple of our eye can't be defined by what he has or what he does. We care instead for what he is and isn't and what he is just as simple as he is. A himbo. In this quote, it's a little more clear. Blah, blah, blah. Objectification, blah, 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 blah. This is the modern himbo. Honestly, a far simpler definition than what we've been working with. He is hot, but not particularly smart, which as you can recall, is pretty much the exact definition that Miriam Webster gave us at the beginning of this video. So have we gotten anywhere? Not yet. We're getting there, I swear to God. Ma expands on it. That's not to say that the modern himbo isn't smart. If he is, he simply doesn't need you to know that he is. And now he references another work, which clearly is very important and influential in the realm of himbo academia. In her treatise of early modern himbo theory, titled, I would love to date a man who can't read for the outline, Nilfa Hadai suggests that there's a growing interest in pretty people with not to say, as well as a growing disillusionment with traditional intelligence. There's something safe in knowing that you'll comfortably win every argument, she says, and that your partner will bow down to your assumed superior knowledge without question. Please welcome to the floor, Jason Mendoza, everybody. He's the perfect example of this type the guy who like is so dumb like you'll win every argument basically like you aren't intellectual equals but i don't think i even have to say that this just like isn't a great way to look at people in general to assume that people don't have any emotional depth or intelligence just because they maybe aren't able to articulate that but i will be talking about that a little bit more in the next section real world ramifications. As for any kind of stereotype created or portrayed in film, I think there comes a danger when we try applying these archetypes to real life people. This disregards the complexity of human experience and behavior, and specifically in this case, thinking of someone as a harmless himbo might actually exempt them from the consequences of harmful behavior because you're painting it as sort of like this endearing part of their personality. This is from the same ID article previously mentioned. Quote, it's more of a mindset, Simon tells me, explaining that amongst friends, himbos embody a form of harmless masculinity with a certain innocence or placidness you'd associate with a lack of intelligence. I think that this particular quote hints at what we all think about, which is just like applying this term in a goofy, not so serious way. You know, it's just sort of like, your mindset, man. <laughs> People don't tend to gravitate towards that as a definition. People gravitate towards assigning others very specific labels. But people are more complicated than that. Whoa, who knew? And for the most part, I think that it's just kind of a fun word. Not every himbo is committing harm to others and you can exist within a character type without being confined to it. The main danger, as I said before, comes from making assumptions about an entire person's intellectual or emotional experience. People can have incredibly complex ideas and insights, but be unable to articulate them by the standards of academia, which are incredibly exclusive standards. Does that make someone vacuous? How do you know there's not a lot going on up there? Basically, if you take one thing away from this video, don't make assumptions about someone's emotional or intellectual experience based on how they're able to articulate them to you. Especially if you only accept ideas in a really like academic or like eloquently spoken way. <laughs> Examine that, please. Now, past the character type, I also wanna talk about another thing portrayed in film a lot that impacts our real lives, and that is toxic relationships as portrayed in movies. I'm just gonna throw this in here because why make a separate video? So I'm a movie major, in case you didn't know that, and one of the things that we learn in screenwriting is to not give your protagonist good friends, like actively give them bad friends who put pressure on them. Because while good friends are necessary and important in real life, one of the main goals of storytelling is to be putting pressure on your protagonist to deal with whatever internal problems they have. Without that pressure, the story just isn't going to go anywhere. So you need friends who are toxic, who don't really listen, who don't give good advice, and who abandon your protagonist in a time of need. The other side of the coin is that your protagonist is the toxic one. And that's the internal issue that they need to deal with, but they can't 
face that until everyone they love has abandoned them for being an asshole. Because of this, I would argue that there really aren't that many healthy relationship dynamics portrayed in television or in film because healthy relationships just don't make for good entertainment. And this can have really, really significant real life ramifications when harmful behavior is normalized or even celebrated in TV shows and movies. <laughs> Pretty Little Liars. Edward Cullen entering Bella's bedroom in the middle of the night and just standing there? We're throwing in another topic. Let's talk about bad boys. <laughs> I want to mention the distinctions and similarities between himbos and bad boys. I am talking about the modern bad boy character who is a little less limited by film censorship and is free to be openly sex driven. Although previous types of the film bad boy have been sex driven, it's just portrayed differently and using signals that a lot of current young people might not be able to immediately grasp. If you see a train go through a tunnel, Think about what's happening. Anyway, I'm talking about these modern, a little more obvious bad boys. Some examples you might be familiar with. Talking about some popular media here, we have Noah Flynn of The Kissing Booth and Peter Kavinsky of To All the Boys I Loved Before. Edward Cullen, who I talked about a little earlier, also kind of falls into this category. The modern bad boy archetype generally has some deeper seated issue, leading him to be cut off from his emotions. So he's also emotionally stunted, quote unquote like the himbo supposedly is. But it's not because he's vacuous, it's just because he's like super repressed. He's often the guy who doesn't really care about anything, might be too cool for school, but not because he isn't smart. He's actually like inexplicably a genius. Another super great example of this type is Hardin Scott of the Wattpad fanfiction turned YA novel turned Netflix movie after. He plays an aloof, uncaring, sex-driven, young man much like many of these other bad boy types but then they get soft and they fall in love and that hard exterior dissolves to reveal a hurt little boy with mommy issues or daddy issues usually one of those two if not both our protagonist has actually changed him nay fixed him because he's realized that he's fallen in love and being sh isn't the way to go but he does not yet know how to be a caring individual so he fucks up once again, leading to the climax of the movie where they are reunited. In case it wasn't obvious, this isn't a great way to model our real life relationships. Men and boys get away with like way too much. Way too much. It's honestly a sign of immaturity. Like emotional communication is also a skill that, that people should learn. People in general. Everybody needs to work on it. So if the person you're with is not doing the literal bare minimum by respecting you, then like have a conversation with them or like just don't give them the stage in your life. I just love finding a way to make random topics be about our interpersonal relationships and how they impact us in our real actual lives. Anyway, don't forget to check out glassesusa.com with the link in my description and like and subscribe with the little button. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. You know where it is. Click it, please. Okay. I will see you in the next one. Tonight, now I know I should go before you.